Hi, I'm Cynthia Hunt. And I'm Cindy Wallace. And we're both from the Amarillo Public Library. Today, we're going to be teaching you five, count them five, origami projects for beginners. Welcome. Today we're going to teach several different things. All of them are uh, best for beginners. Even an advanced person might throw these in with a thank you card. I do it all the time. But things that we're going to cover today include interlocking flowers, mossy boxes with a top and a bottom, a very beautiful intricate flower here that's easier than it looks, a bow. But let's start with a very simple flat folded heart. We have so many fun projects for you today. I'm glad you're here. We're going to start with a simple flat folded heart. These are the things you're going to need. Anything that you can turn into a square of paper, probably a little bit of a glue stick or some tape, a pencil. I think this is rather important for most of what we're doing today. Uh, these are bone folders and they help you get a good crease. You'll see me using them. Uh, but you could also use an expired credit card, driver's license, any hard piece of plastic that you could get a real good crease with would be great for the project. So very simple supplies and anything that you can make a square out of for example a book page or pretty paper these are actual origami papers some are empty on the back and some have pattern design on the back the heart that we're going to do first one side is all I need anything you can make into a square we can go quite large with the heart but if you keep it kind of medium sized you can either tuck it inside of a card or glue it to a card for example these cards would be really easy to just fold up different styles of hearts lay them flat put them in the envelope ready to go in the mail for a birthday or a thank you card let's get started so I just wanted you to see as we start the flat, simple origami heart for the beginning one that I go to one of the local craft stores, Michael's, Joann's, even the dollar store, and you can get 400 pages from a book like this uh, for under 10 or $11. That's what I did with this one. See these beautiful pages? These are beautiful, made up into anything we're gonna show you today, but often when we're teaching, showing you a solid color helps you learn much better the folds that you cannot see because the folds are actually hidden, which is an advantage when you're giving it to someone. But for purposes of teaching, we're going to switch over to one of the solid color pieces. So this is a six inch piece of origami paper. It's only colored on one side. The back side is white. It doesn't matter because you pay more when you get a two-sided paper. Sometimes in the designs they show, sometimes they don't. In the heart, this is the only part that I care about. So let's begin our folds. So I'm gonna turn it down like this so that you can see that my folds are not too complicated. I am going corner to corner. This particular design doesn't have to have the bone folder, folder as much as one of the others that we're going to show you later. So I rotated it. And now I have basically an X going through my paper. Then I'm gonna take the top and I'm gonna put that tip in the middle. Right here is the middle of this design. I'm gonna use it several ways. So I'll fold that point to the middle then I'm going to take the bottom point here and I'm going to fold it all the way up to the top of the edge of the paper, just like this. Now, hopefully you can see there's a line right here through the middle where that point is. And I'm going to grab this edge of the paper and fold it up on that middle line. Once you do it a time or two, you'll be turning these out for everybody. So just to the middle. Same on the other side, fold it up, right there in the middle. Now, it looks a lot like a little red fox. I'm going to flip it over. This is what I see on the back side of the heart. These two points, I'm going to fold down just till they meet 
right there. I tried tucking them under. It flattened the top of my heart out too much when I was first playing with this design. So instead, I recommend that you just carefully fold your point down to this. So now you've got two little triangles there. Now look right here. See this corner here? and this corner right there. I'm gonna fold again. There's four folds on the back of the heart. Now all I'm doing is picking that corner as a common ground place, folding it in on both sides. Now I have one, two, three, four little triangles on the back of my heart. Flip it over and your simple heart is complete. Okay, now that Cindy has finished showing you how to do a simple origami heart, we're going to make an interlocking flower. Now, the flower will need a different square for each of the petals of the flower. So what you're going to need are eight squares that are all the same size. These were both done using three inch by three inch squares of paper. This had four in one color and four of another, which is how I'll be doing the one that I'll show you shortly. And this one was all the same color. As you can see, the middle of these flowers has a small hole in it once you've put it together. So if you'd like, you can get some buttons or a button for each flower and glue it either with hot glue or with some other kind of glue into the middle. It'll need to be a big enough button that it will cover the hole and still leave some more for you to put glue on. But that's what we're gonna do next. You'll also need a bone folder or a lot of times I'll just use the back the top part of my fingernail to make a sharp crease and some glue I'm gonna be using this you can use Elmer's glue any kind of glue that's good on paper and the kind of paper I used on this was just colored copy paper so let's get started so when beginning your interlocking flower, you're going to need, as I have mentioned, eight squares of paper. And what I'm doing is I'm using three inch squares. And I'm going to do one diagonal fold. And then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees so that that fold goes to and away from me. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do what Gil calls the classic airplane fold. I am going to go along that fold with the right corner and then again with the left corner. And the good thing about this particular project is that it's a very forgiving project. So if you don't get it perfect, which is great if you're a beginner, is you go on ahead, see and I use the back of my fingernail, and you make something that looks a little bit like a kite. The next step you're gonna do is you're going to fold this so that it has a seam right where these two corners meet. So it's going to have a point in the middle, right up here, and you're going to fold it along there. Then you're going to open it back up and take the tip and have it meet those other two corners right there. Now you're going to flip it over and see where this seam meets this seam, this little fold. We're going to fold this tip right up where those two meet. And that is a petal of your flower. So let's do it one more time. You do the diagonal fold. You rotate it. Do the airplane fold. Ever make paper airplanes? I used to make them all the time. They never flew very well, but they were pretty. And then you do the other side. And towards the end, you may want to pooch it out a little bit towards the tip so that it goes nice and flat because it tends to not want to roll over that much. Then you have your little kite shape. 
or diamond shape, you fold this part up, unfold it, then fold that corner to meet the other corners. See, like that. Then you flip it over and grab the long corner down here and bring it up where this center, that first fold that you made, the fold from that, and this fold that goes from corner to corner meet right up here. And you just push it down while holding that in place. And that is two petals. Now you're going to need eight petals. So go on ahead and get your other petals made. And when you're ready, I'll show you how to assemble this. So you can hit pause now and when you're ready, I'll show you how to assemble. Now, you're gonna need your glue. I'm gonna take that cap off. And you're gonna take, since I'm doing two colors, I'm going to go on ahead and do kind of a pre-fit and see how that little slit between in the middle of this front part goes in. You go on ahead and you put the next petal all the way up to where it's going as far in as it can and be touching this bottom part of that seam and this top part. And figure out how much of your petal is going to need to be glued. Because if you don't glue it, it's just gonna fall apart. So, you get a little bit of glue, not a lot, just a little, and glue the underside of your petal because that way if there's any smear of glue, it's gonna either fall on this side or somewhere along here on your petal. So it'll never show if you put it in this way. And you go on ahead and press it down. And that's all there is to it. So then you get your next one and you put it in and figure out how much you're going to need to glue on this one. And here's the petal. I'm gonna glue it just a little. Doesn't need a lot of glue. Probably put more on there than I should, but this will show you how nicely this goes together because see, you don't see any leftover glue on the top side of your flower and that's important. Now, get another yellow one and we're gonna put it in here. And the, the reason I do this every time is that it not only helps me know how much glue to put on this corner of that petal, but it also trains this fold here to be up a little bit, so it makes it easier to insert. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue and then I'm going to insert it and press. And I'm gonna get a purple one, test it, turn it, glue. All the way in and press for just a second or two. I'm gonna get a yellow one next. And make sure that you're putting them so that these both have this side facing up. I've had some people in classes accidentally start putting them in this way. And then you don't have anything you can insert on the next petal. So you wanna make sure you have this slit of this tip facing up. And this is what you call, because it's more than one piece of paper, it's called modular origami, where you use more than one piece of paper, but doing the same shape every time. Almost put the wrong color in there. There we go. Okay, it gets a little bit tricky on these last two. So I'm gonna put this one in. That went real nicely. Now I'm gonna do this one and then I'm going to have to connect this circle. So, I'm gonna put this in just like I did all of the others. And pop it in there, hold it. And then you see how it's on top of the other? You're gonna have to bring this bottom part forward and put it in there just like you would every other time. 
come on, get in there. It's being difficult. Because it's the last one. And say, no, I want my 15 minutes of fame. And you'll notice when you put this last one in, instead of being flat, it suddenly curves up a little bit. And that's okay. What you'll do is just put this last little bit of glue on there, just like you did all the other petals. And then you're going to start it at the corner and bring it in and hold it. And then you have this little bitty hole here. And what you can do is you can either use regular glue or you can get some hot glue and glue around the edges of this hole and put the glue on the button and the button in the glue. And now you have a flower. For the Matsu box, the supplies are very similar. You're still probably going to want that bone folder. It's very important to me, particularly when I'm doing edges for a square. You're still going to want the similar squares of paper to work with, right down to map pages. You could recycle an old calendar. I've done it. Some of what you'll see here in just a second, I literally took from this calendar. You can make any size of box that you want, up to about a 10 inch square. I've tried going big, and the bigger you get, the weaker the box gets. So kind of medium large to smaller makes a stronger box. You can decorate your box with those hearts that we made earlier if you want to. You're going to have tops and bottoms. Traditional Masu boxes were measures of rice. So you can make any size you want depending on the size of square that you're going to use right down to small average made out of a scrap an itty bitty teeny tiny box. Now we're ready to work on our Masu box. I really love this one. I love making it. I like showing it to people and putting it in their hands and letting them take it home. Um, you can see how beautiful this paper is. It's one of those. It's good on one side, white on the other. I have other samples of, for example, this one. He's pretty cool. He's a bright lime green on this side and a pale peach on the other side. If the both sides were going to show at some point that would become more important. I also think that I should teach you that's not too bad. Is that better? Yes it is. But for the top of the box I might choose the print on the bottom of the box because this has a lid on this box. I might choose two different colorways to accomplish that. Today I will be showing you the boxes, the folding on uh, just solid colors of paper, but I wanted to make the point with you that you should stop and think a minute before you start your lidded box. These two came from the calendar that I showed you earlier. Uh, this has a whale, this has some sort of bottom of the sea creature, and I picked. I didn't know where the designs would exactly end up, but I picked what I thought I wanted to be the top. This will matter when we're making our pattern. So there's the top of my box. Another example right here is a, a beautiful flower, solid color here. I'll show you how to make the tops and the bottoms in case you want to put a two-tone on your box. Also, wanted to make the point along with that two-tone, they're two solid colors. This one looks really good because it, no matter how I turn it, looks wonderful because we've added that heart from a previous one. I'm also going to put some very nice extra links for those of you who are interested. Like here's one I made out of a map page. There's the red inside, and then as you can see on top, this is heart is a little bit different and it's a little smaller, and I put the link for that. I actually can fit a quarter inside that one as well. And don't forget, you can always use book pages. Anything that you can cut a square out of, we can make this Masu box into a beautiful shape. So let me pick. I think that'll show up good on camera, and I think this will probably show. 
So now I have two different colorways. No, they're not near as pretty as one of these prints, but for teaching purposes, this really is the way to go. So you should stop and pick what you want to be your top and what you want to be your bottom. In this case, I want this paler yellow to be my bottom and the bright orange to be my top in case I want to put something pretty on top of it when I'm done. So this is a yellow and a white, and we're going to first make the bottom of the Masu box. We're gonna actually do the box twice. But there's one little trick when we get to making the top. We make it slightly bigger. So similar to some of the other folds that you've already done today, this time the bone folder becomes more important than anything else we've covered because these creases have to be sharp. I did it on the horizontal, I rotated, doing it the other direction, horizontal. And by the way, on almost any origami fold you do, those first two or three folds are the really important ones for most origami projects. Now I have an X that I think you can see on screen. I'm gonna rotate and I'm going to do like we did with the heart. I'm going to go corner to corner. And again, bone folder, you see me doing that. Maybe I can't press as hard as I would like with my finger, but all of us that do this really love the bone folder. So I'll show you a different style of one. This one I got off of Amazon. It still has that point that I use because sometimes I pop the pieces of paper open, but it's that crisp edge that I'm after in the folding. Now I see a real pretty star creased pattern here, um, getting ready for my Masu box. And this time we're gonna take all four points to the middle, similar to how we started the heart with earlier. I'll rotate and get all of my um, corners into the middle, then I like to take my bone folder and just give it a little extra creasing while I'm at that stage. So rotating, folding that midpoint in, then go back over everything right quick with your bone folder. That crisp edge will make turning this flat piece of paper into a box ever so much easier. Now, it may be a little hard to see, so I think I'll actually just draw it so you can see for sure. There's a middle line here that I'm gonna use to fold in. So I've got the basic first three folds. Now I'm actually going to fold completely to the middle of my design. And again, bone folder, guys. Opposite side, fold right to the middle, but no overlapping, because I'm gonna have to open it up to turn it into a box. I can do a little better right there. Okay, bone folder crease. Okay, now we've done two horizontal sides. I'm going to open it up. We've done those. I'm gonna do this side and this side. Again, fold into the middle. This time, you draw the line so I can be quite sure that you see that the middle fold, it's there. I just wanna make sure you can see it on camera. This time, again, right up to the middle fold, pressing it with my fingers, then the bone folder, rotate, Fold this edge up to the middle, but not overlapping. Sometimes when you get a bubble like that, I use that bone folder to good advantage to keep my corners crisp when I know how the design's supposed to turn out. Bone folder creases. I've been real careful to do that bone folder most of the way. Now I'm going to open it up there. And one more time, I'm pulling on these tabs, opening it up. So this is the shape that you're looking for. And hopefully you can see that there are little squares crisscrossing the entire design. You can see these more on the solid color. They get tricky to see if we had chosen a pattern to start with as far as the paper. Now I'm going to fold this side in and this side in. It doesn't hurt if you give it a little bit more of a crease, although we have already done it. The idea is it sort of looks like 
a little taco boat right there. Now the tricky part. I'm gonna rotate and I'm gonna show you I have a crease. One, two, three lines in front of me. I'm going to put my finger at this crease while pushing in right here on these corners. I'll get that like I want it, then I'll show it on camera. Okay, this right here where these corners have been mashed in is what I am after. The reason for that is that I had those three lines and I have used the bone folder which makes it very easy to just fold over, push the last flap down into the bottom, and give it a little extra pinch here. Okay, now I rotated, same thing over here, one, two, three lines, pushing in at the corners. Sometimes you have to give it a little extra fold to get it to do what you want to. So I'm using my finger to help it pinch in. This one, look right here, this one is just automatically going exactly where I want it. This one is misbehaving a little bit. It's not because I didn't do the fold right, it's because it needs to be more sharply creased right there in that crease. So go ahead and bend it in, give it a pinch, and roll your box over the top of it and gently mash it into shape. Sometimes people like to put a little bit of glue or tape right here to hold it down. I have been making quite a few of these and in general once it sits there a little bit, as you can see, the points will lay flat in the bottom of your box. Now let's repeat the, the steps and learn how to make the top of your box. So I'm switching over to the orange, the brighter orange that I chose as the top. Although truthfully, one of these pretty patterns makes a better top, as you can see, than just a solid color, unless you're gonna add something on top of it. So this will be good side face down. Let's repeat the steps right quick. Fold horizontal both directions. And I'll give you the secret to making the top actually fit your box. It's a good one. So we did our horizontals. Now we're going corner to corner as we did on the first box. Rotate corner to corner, knowing that I should produce a star effect of folds when I'm done. So I'm looking to see if they're all there. That looks like a star. Then I can start putting my corners to the middle and I do that once again, all the way around. Then I hit it with the bone folder or a credit card, anything that's hard that will help you get a, a real good crease in the fold that you have just made. Okay, so that's the look that I'm after. Then go ahead, makes those creases easier later especially in the first few steps on this Masu box. We've all been playing with these and we, we like each other's designs very much. Because right there I have the, the corners folded in and hopefully you can see going both directions there's a middle crease there and there. And of course there'll be one there for in a minute when I rotate. This time, we don't go all the way to the middle crease. This time, we stay, stay just shy, maybe an eighth of an inch, but stay short of making it to that middle crease. This is, will effectively make your box lid bigger. So I'm gonna do that going both directions, and I'll show you in just a second how it is roughly a quarter of an inch. Let me mash that down so you can see good. Right here is a roughly a quarter of an inch of space left over because I want my box to be slightly bigger on top so it'll go over the bottom. Open it back up. This time fold the other direction again, not quite to the middle. Get 
put that crease in there real good. Not quite to the middle, leaving about a quarter inch space in between these two folded pieces. Like that, quarter inch. We've done both sides. Open it up. Open one more time. Make sure you have all the little squares. They look pretty good right there. Then for some insurance, I just fold in again. Make that sort of taco shape right there, a boat shape. Rotate. And I have one, two, three lines. That's the part that folds over the top of my box. That's the top edge of my box, and that's the bottom of my box. Take your fingers and press in. You're after this fold right here, so you're pressing in as you fold. It's a little hard to see, but hopefully that comes across pretty well on screen so that you can just literally lay the rest of it because we use the bone folder perfectly into place. Rotate, repeat. Gently press in, up, over. Perfect little box top. If I pinch him, he'll stay in place. The corners are sharp and crisp. It is slightly bigger than this bottom piece. Since I wanted that to be the top, let's try it out. Put him over, gently, so that you can see the top fits just over the bottom. I can decorate it any way I want. I can actually close the box if I need to. And there's my perfect box top. So now you have learned the simple heart, the interlocking flower, and a masu box. Up next, I'm going to be showing you how to make a kasutama flower. Now, a kasutama flower can have anywhere from five to eight petals, and you'll make each petal separately. The word kasutama is a mashup of two different words in Japanese, and the first one means medicine, and the second one means ball. So in ancient Japan, they would take flowers and spices that were supposed to have medicinal properties, and they would create these ball ornaments that they would hang over somebody's sick bed to help them breathe better or to make them feel more relaxed or for whatever reason. Today, we're just gonna be using paper. So what you're gonna use, and that's what most of them use these days. So we're gonna have, you'll need between five and eight squares of paper and one for each petal of your flower. And the ones I'm gonna be using are three inch by three inch. You'll also be needing a bone folder, some glue that's good for paper, some paper clips, one for each petal of the flower that you're going to be making. And you're going to, if you want to put them on a stem, you'll need some stem wire. You can get that at dollar stores. You can get that at most craft stores or floral supply places or online. Um, you'll also possibly, you can tell that this doesn't have anything in the middle, just like the last one I did. This one has a little button, so if you want, you can put a button and again, you can hot glue it on there. So, or just regular glue if you want, but make sure you use one that will be good if you're using a plastic button that it'll work for plastic as well as paper. So, let's get started. Just like we did earlier with the interlocking flower, you're going to need eight squares of paper. And again, I'm using the same size I did before, some colored copy paper that is three inches by three inches. You're also gonna need some glue, and if you want it, a stem and a button and some paper clips because you're not folding all of the edges on this one and it's gonna come out more three-dimensional than a lot of our other projects so far. So first you're going to need to, for your first step of a petal, you're gonna make each petal separately. And what you're gonna do is do a diagonal fold corner to corner.
and you don't have to do the whole foam folder, but you can. And then you're going to bring one corner up to that top corner, and then the other corner up to that top corner. And you may notice these aren't exactly square. I just did them with a paper cutter. It doesn't matter as long as you have one point at the top. Now, once you have these, they form a little square. Next, you're gonna fold the seam of one of the sides to where it is level with this edge of your square. So you roll it back, make it even with that one, and then you can go on ahead and fold. And this is getting kind of a lot of thicknesses of paper, so it doesn't hurt to go on ahead and crease it really well. I go on ahead and frequently just go on ahead and dig in with my thumbnail a little bit down at the tip so it doesn't go off in a weird direction. Now this makes kind of a fleur-de-lis type thing or a trefoil. But what we're gonna do next is called exploding or blowing out these two folds. And to do that, because there are two thicknesses, you're going to move one thickness out. See how it was in there together? I'm gonna take this one and make it fold in the opposite direction. And that makes another little kite shape or diamond shape. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. So there are three little diamonds. Now, you have a choice here. You can fold it over in the back and that'll just give you, instead of three things in the middle, it'll give you just one. But I, in this case, I think more is better. So I'm gonna fold it towards me instead of behind. So there we go. Those are both folded down. Then I'm going to refold this over. So it once again forms a little bitty square. Now, to make your petal rounded, what you're gonna do is take one of these two little narrow triangles and put some glue on it. Doesn't have to be a lot, but you want it all up and down. And you're gonna get glue on yourself, just know that going in. And what you're gonna do is kind of roll it and fold it over so that the edges meet here. And you want them to be the same height along here. But you don't fold this back part. You just let it curve. But you're gonna press these two edges together where it folded. And then you are going to get a paper clip and clip those two middle sections together. And you want it as close to this edge because that's where the center of your flower is going to be. You want to put it as close to that edge as you can. And you do not want these little metal ends of your paper clip to go below the top of your paper because they can sometimes change angle when you're trying to pull them out. And it makes it really, really difficult to get them out without tearing the paper. So, I'm doing an eight petaled flower this time. So I'm gonna go on ahead, do one more petal, cause I've only got seven. And whenever I'm doing an even numbered petaled flower, I usually go on ahead, or at least lately I have been, and get two colors so I can alternate them, cause I just think it's fun. So this goes up to the middle. I'm doing that diagonal fold. We're bringing both of these up to the middle to make a square. And for some reason, this next step here is what almost everybody messes up on. We're going to roll it back so that this seam is even with this seam. And fold. And roll. And fold. And this is the other part that they tend to go nuts so old on, is making this blow out. So you take the inner part of the paper 
and explode it so it shapes that little kite or diamond shape. Do the same thing on the other side. You can go on ahead and stick your finger in there if you need to, or your bone folder. That can be very handy for getting that bottom part to go out all the way. So now you have three almost identical little kite shapes. You're going to fold this part forward all the way down to where it's level with the unfolded portion. Do the same thing on the other side, just like you've done with so many other projects before. And then you are going to fold this back over the way it was before you exploded it. Then, once again, you get your glue, and you fold it over. And if this isn't perfect, it's okay, because there's eight of them, and nobody's gonna be examining this edge of your flower because it's gonna be hidden by all the other petals. Just don't crease this back part. You want it to bend, not crease. Then we are going to put this over, and it's being difficult, of course, because I'm on camera. There we go. And I'll get it on there, then I'll scooch it towards the middle and then move it farther in. I just want those ends of the paper clip sticking out just a little bit so they don't get caught inside the flower. Now, to assemble your flower, you're gonna get some more paper clips. I'm gonna let these two that I just made dry a little bit and use them last. I'm gonna get a blue one petal and an orange petal, and I'm going to put just a little bit of glue along here. And then I'm going to put an orange one up next to it. And I'm gonna hold these together for just a moment so that glue can begin its bond. Not James Bond, just Bond. Okay. And I want these to be level with each other. And then I'm going to get a paper clip and catch these two sides of these petals and move them in like this so I get as much of that in contact with those sides as I can. But see, this way it's folded all the way down. These are not folded, they are rounded. And depending on how many petals you have, you will wind up just having five or eight petals. Now this, I'm gonna get another one and put it on there. One of the things is that you can see that they curve up a little bit. The fewer petals you have, the more curve there will be in your flower on the top. The more of them you have, the less they have to bow out. So I'm gonna go on ahead, put another paper clip in there. Then I'm gonna grab another orange one, because orange and blue are opposites on the color wheel, so they're complementary colors, so they go well together. Maybe someday we'll talk about that a little bit more. So, press these together, and it gets hard to press these together without crumpling the other petals once you get to three or four. Just make sure you don't go past those, get those ends down below in the paper. But see, now I've got four, and I'm doing an eight petal one. I've done six and I liked it and I like eight also. So next I'm gonna do, what you can do if you want is if you have, this was a six petal one. If you're going to add a stem, you can put your glue down in here and then rest the stem in it and let it dry. 
and then once it's dried on one side then you can kind of put more glue there and more glue here and then pop them both together and that's how you add a stem if you want a stem like i've said the casutama balls generally don't have stems they're just glued on the backs of the petals to additional flowers like this or like this but usually just by two petals so they look really pretty and I'm gonna go on ahead and do my next petal and because of our wonderful dry weather that we're having I'm being sarcastic for you farmers I know we could use the rain but because we're having dry weather, by the time I have finished doing these all together, those last couple of orange petals that I made will be all done. They'll be nice and dry. I can go ahead and take this one now and put it on. And put it in there. Put the next flower petal on. they're level with each other and then that paper clip doesn't go in just too far and when I say level I mean the front seams along here towards the center are level see if I wanted to do a six petal one, it would bend a little bit more and that makes these top pieces the little points curve up more but I'm decided to go on ahead and do eight so you'd have a little bit more experience on this I'm gonna put Next to the last one, I'm going to put some glue along here. It doesn't have to be a whole lot, but you do want it kind of in both directions along that seam. And I'll put this one in. And sometimes it can be easier, like I did with this one, to do half and half so then you can just let them dry and then stick the two halves together. I've got to move that one up. There we go. And I'm putting the paper clip on and moving it towards the center or the front seam and then bringing it down just a little bit. Now we just have room for one more. So I'm going to take this paper clip off first. See what I mean? It gets a little bit sticky to take out, even though both ends are out there. Here we go. I'm gonna go on ahead and put a little glue here and a little glue here, just for the sake of it. And put it between these two. And I'm going to squish the whole flower in just a little bit so it gets held in place while I put in these paper clips. Give them just a little bit more. Here we go. And then I'm going to put another one between on this side of the orange petal. And there you have a Kasutama flower. And if I wanted, I could either have gone on ahead and put a stem in or not, but I opted not to this time, just so you could see the process. But if you did want to put a stem in, again, you could go on ahead, put some glue here, stick it there, let it rest until it's nice and dry, and then put some glue on this side as well as on the sides of the petals so it's all glued together and you'd have a little six petaled flower. This is gonna be an eight petaled flower. And once it's been on there for a second, you can go on ahead and take out all of your paper clips in the order that you put them in so that the last one you put in, which is this one right here, will have had a little bit more time to cure and dry. And this way you get a nice little three-dimensional flower. And you can go on ahead and if you have hot glue or whatever you can, or regular glue, 
if you have the patience for it. I don't usually. You can go on ahead and make sure you get a button that would cover up that hole and also overlap with the centers of these flowers and then you can glue it on. And that's how you make a Kasutama flower. Hi, uh, my name is Gilbert. Um, for our final project, we'll be doing an origami bow. Uh, this is what it looks like. Um, and it's very simple. All you'll need is a square piece of paper. Um, any size really will do. Uh, the smaller you go, it will be a little more difficult, but uh, um, it's not really that hard. Um, if you use origami paper, it's a lot easier. Uh, because it folds easier and it doesn't crack, uh, you know, like other papers will. And all you need is, besides a square piece of paper, is some scissors. And uh, these bows are really nice. Uh, you can use them for packaging, uh, put on cards. Uh, they keep their shape, they stay nice and flat. So when you can, uh, you know, send them, uh, you know, through the mail. So. Okay, uh, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start with our square piece of paper here. And we're going to try to create some uh, guidelines. Uh, we're going to create some that are going to go uh, horizontal and vertical and then also diagonally. So we'll start by doing one side first, make the seam, and then we'll do the other side. Press that seam also. Now we'll do our diagonal. We'll line up the edge here. And then we'll just press down from one point to the other. And then we'll make another diagonal. Okay, so now we've got our lines. And uh, we're just going to make sure that these are nice and uh, pressed just so that uh, we can make sure that we can see uh, the lines nice and clear. Okay, so now you can see that we've got some triangle shapes and some square shapes in here. Um, but I'm going to make sure uh, that I have nice flexibility on the fold, so I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to fold it the opposite direction. Now do same, the same thing with the other fold. Okay, so I got that where I want it. Um, basically, we want to concentrate on the uh, square shapes because we're going to um, try and put those together so you can see where I've uh, outlined those so you can see that it's kind of already starting to fold in on itself so all we have to do is just press on one side and then press it against the other side 
and one point to one point and we've created a square so I'll do that again so you can have a better idea so and it really doesn't matter which squares you choose to put together um, either ones will do uh, one of the easy ways too is you can grab two corners put them together and grab the other two corners and put them together and you'll have a square okay so now we want to uh, have the uh, the part that comes together um, that joins the paper at the top and we're going to score it and basically we're just going to score it just so we can be able to fold it easier and you can use a bone folder you can use your fingernail some scissors and we'll just fold a small piece you don't want to go too big uh, on the fold because uh, your bow will look a little awkward uh, but you don't want to do it too small either uh, then you won't have enough uh, to create the part so and then again we fold back and forth just to give it some flexibility um, we can open it up uh, close it flatten it out again and then and then reinforce that fold again so now that we've got that you know part uh, showing you can see that we've created a little square in the center and we're gonna need that as a guide because we're gonna use that to create our uh, our second sort of uh, part to this to this project so it gets a little tricky uh, we're going to make sure that the diagonal folds are going away from us and then the, the side folds or the horizontal and vertical folds are coming towards us and we're going to go ahead and grab those uh, horizontal folds to make this a little easier because basically what we're going to do is try to invert the square and make a pocket with it so one of the easy ways is to grab one of the edges and then start uh, pressing or pinching on the the edge of that square on one side and then we'll do the same thing here in a minute on the other side and you can see that it starts to uh, be more pronounced and you can see that square really good now and basically what we're going to do is just start pressing on the edges and then that'll get us to where we want this shape to be so we'll just start pressing on the edges of that square and uh, now you see that we've got a little star shape and now you can see we've kind of basically created a little uh, star shaped pocket and basically you've got uh, you've created some fins but we're gonna flatten that out and now we're going to have a diamond shape. So I'll open this up so you can see how it kind of looks from the inside. And I'll close it up again and we'll get back to the shape we want. So now we're going to do some folds to lock in that shape. Uh, basically lock in that pocket we're gonna get the top edge and line it up with the center and create a parallel fold and it doesn't have to be a perfect parallel fold but just an overall 
you know, parallel fold. Same thing, we line up the top edge to that center line and make another parallel fold. And we'll turn this around and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Just line up that top edge with the center. Do that parallel fold. And do the same thing with the other side. And you'll see we've got a square again. What this is going to do is it's going to lock in that little pocket shape inside and it's going to help us create the center of our bow. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. We're going to open this up. And you can see in the center, it looks like a little pyramid. So what we're going to do uh, is slowly open this and just delicately press down on the top of that little pyramid until it starts to create uh, the little middle part of your bow, the little square shape. And there you can see that it's starting to take a, a bow shape. So now we'll turn this to the side. We'll turn it around and uh, we're going to basically do some cutting. Uh, origami usually doesn't have cutting, but this particular one <laughs> does. And what we're going to do is cut along the edges of these folds. Uh, but we're, we're going to try to create uh, our tails for the bow. And uh, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. And um, we're going to try to free up these parts by cutting along the edges and we'll cut just to the corner for the moment and we'll just go around and do the same thing with the others again we'll just cut to the corner Turn this around and do the other side. And now you see that we freed up those parts which are going to become our tails. And we can flip them up or down, it doesn't matter. Um, basically we're just going to choose what's going to be the our front part of our tails and what's going to be our, our, our back tails. Um, once we choose how we want it to go, uh, you can see now uh, We've got that bow shape. And now we're going to go ahead and split uh, the tails. We're going to cut down the center. And you could do line them up and do it both at the same time, or you can do it one at a time. I decided to do mine one at a time. Cut the first one. Now I'm going to cut the second piece. And you don't want to call cut all the way up, just you know, uh, just to the point where you still uh, have uh, a hold with those. Okay, we're gonna get these parts, and we're gonna do a little more cutting. We're gonna snip just halfway, or a little less than halfway. We'll snip the edges here. Basically what we're going to do is free up a little bit of that paper. 
and we're going to use those edges and fold them. And here it really doesn't matter. You don't have to fold them parallel. Uh, you can fold them as much as you want. It just depends now how big you want your tails to be. If you want them to be narrow, you can fold a lot more paper. If you want them to stay wider, then you can fold less. And uh, so this part's really up to you, your preference. Now we'll fold the uh, center parts of the the tails. Okay, so basically we've got those first two done. We'll do the same thing to the others. Again, we'll snip just a little bit. We'll flip these over and do the same thing. We'll do our folds. Okay, so now we've got all four done. We'll flip those back over. We'll turn this turn this over. And you can see now we've got our four tails. And if you wish, just depending, you can uh, leave it like this if you want. Like some people uh, like the look of uh, the tails this way and uh, you can leave like this but we're going to do what they call the the ribbon tail we're going to cut a little diagonal cut at an angle here and same thing we'll, on the other side basically uh, just to kind of have it even I'll just try to uh, line that up and I'll do another cut on the other side and you'll notice now it looks like a little ribbon and we'll do the same thing with the back but we'll cut we'll line it up and we'll cut lower Same thing on the other side, we'll cut a little lower. And there you go, you can see the ribbon tails for the bow. And you can see that it's our bow is starting to take shape. but we've got a few four more folds to go. We're going to do an airplane fold on the back and we want the narrow point uh, to point outwards. So we're going to line up this edge with the center. Now you don't want to accidentally uh, do it reversed. Uh, you want to make sure that you do it as you can see here. Uh, we'll fold it and you'll see that it starts to create an arrow point. It looks like an arrowhead that's pointing outwards. We'll turn this over and do the same thing on this other side. So now you have two arrowheads pointing outwards. And it'll look like so. So 
now we're going to go ahead and finish off our bow and we're going to get the, the point of that arrowhead fold it over and tuck the point under the little square it should have some pockets on the side and we'll press down We'll do the same thing on the other side. Take that in and there it is. Uh, we've got our bow shape. So uh, again, you can use this to put on a gift card, uh, you know, present, um, and you have different options. Uh, you can choose different colors of paper. You can make the bow as big as you want or as small as you want, depending on how uh, uh, how comfortable you are with uh, changing the shape and size. So there you have it. Five Calum 5 Origami Projects for Beginners. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give us a thumbs up Subscribe if you'd like to go to our other videos and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be alerted when we have something new to offer. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.